To check if a number is divisible by 3, there's a trick. We can add up the digits and see if that sum is divisible by 3. Let's find divisibility rules like this for each number up to 12, see why they work, and in level 5 we'll explore some rules in other bases. First, let's talk about divisibility by 2, 5, and 10. To check if a number is divisible by 2, we look at the last digit and see if that digit is divisible by 2. We can ignore all the higher order digits. Why is that? Say we have the number 352. We can write this as 3 times 100 plus 5 times 10 plus 2 times 1. Since 10 and 100 are both divisible by 2, those terms are automatically divisible by 2, no matter what digits are in those positions. So all we have to check is that the 1's digit is divisible by 2. The same trick works for 5. 10, 100, and so on are all divisible by 5. So all we have to look at is the 1's digit. If that digit's a 0 or a 5, then the number is divisible by 5. And that same trick works for 10. We just check if the last digit is 0. For level 2, let's find rules for divisibility by 4 and 8. 100, 1000, and so on are all divisible by 4. But a key difference this time is that 10 is not divisible by 4. So we can ignore the hundreds place and higher, but we'll have to check those last two digits. For example, if we want to check if 732 is divisible by 4, we can just check the last two digits, 32. And since that is divisible by 4, so is the original number. We can enhance this trick by recognizing that 20 is divisible by 4. So although we have to include the tens place, we can convert it to be either a 0 or a 1 by subtracting 20 as needed. For example, if we want to check if 956 is divisible by 4, we look at the last two digits, 56, and then you can convert the 5 to be a 1 by subtracting 20 twice. So then we're just checking that 16 is divisible by 4. To check for divisibility by 8, this gets a touch harder since 100 is not divisible by 8. But 1000 and all the higher powers of 10 are. So we can just look at the three digits on the right. Say we want to check if 38,512 is divisible by 8. We can just look at the rightmost three digits and check that 512 is divisible by 8, which it is. You can take the trick a bit farther if you like. Since 200 is divisible by 8, we can always convert the hundreds place digit to be a 0 or a 1. So then instead of checking if 512 is divisible by 8, you could instead check 112. For level 3, let's talk about dividing by 3 and 9. 10 divided by 3 has a remainder of 1. 100 divided by 3 also has a remainder of 1, and so on. Since 10 has a remainder of 1 when we divide by 3, we say that 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 3. So if we're only looking at remainders when we divide by 3, 10 is essentially the same as 1. So 10 squared is essentially the same as 1 squared. So 100 is congruent to 1 modulo 3. And so on for all higher powers of 10. Say we want to check if 429 is divisible by 3. We can write this number as 4 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 9 times 1. All the powers of 10 are congruent to 1 mod 3, so the remainder is congruent to 4 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 9 times 1. In other words, we can just add up the digits of the number. 4 plus 2 plus 9 equals 15, which is divisible by 3. So 429 is also divisible by 3. The same trick also works for 9. When we divide 10 by 9, we get a remainder of 1. So 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 9. Just like before, this means that 100, 1000, and so on all have a remainder of 1 when we divide them by 9. So we can add up all the digits of the number and see if that sum is divisible by 9. Let's check if 2791 is divisible by 9. We add up the digits 2 plus 7 plus 9 plus 1 equals 19. This is not divisible by 9, so the original number is not divisible either. And now we automatically get a divisibility trick for 6. We can check that the number is divisible by both 2 and 3 using those two rules. We can also check for divisibility by 12 by checking if the number is divisible by 3 and 4. For level 4, let's look at the trickier ones, 11 and 7. 
If we divide 10 by 11, then we get a remainder of 10. Another way to think of this is that we're one short of a multiple of 11. So we say that 10 is congruent to negative one modulo 11. What about 100? 100 is actually a little too big. 99 is a multiple of 11, and then we have a remainder of one. We can also see this from the modular arithmetic. 10 is congruent to negative one mod 11, so 10 squared is congruent to negative one squared, which is one. This means that this pattern will continue. 1,000 will be congruent to negative one mod 11, and 10,000 will be congruent to positive one, and so on. Say we want to check if 42,931 is divisible by 11. We can write out the base 10 expansion, and now when we divide by 11, 10,000 has remainder 1, and 1,000 is congruent to negative 1. Then 100 is congruent to 1, and 10 is congruent to negative 1. So we alternate adding and subtracting the digits. We have plus 4, minus 2, plus 9, minus 3, plus 1 which is equal to nine. This is not divisible by 11, so neither is the original number. What about seven? This one is trickier since the powers of 10 don't have nice remainders when divided by seven, but 50 divided by seven has a remainder of one, so we can build a divisibility rule out of 50. Let's say we want to check if 463 is divisible by seven. Since 50 works better than 10, let's multiply the number by five. Since five and seven have no common factors, this won't change the divisibility. Now we have five times 463. Let's write the last digit separately so that we can extract a 10 to get 50. We can write this as five times 46 times 10 plus three, which is 50 times 46 plus five times three. When we divide by seven, 50 has a remainder of one. So we end up with 46 plus five times three. Compared to what we started with, we've removed the last digit, but we had to add five times that last digit. This gives a divisibility rule. To make it even nicer, we can notice that five is congruent to negative two modulo seven. This is saying that five is two less than a multiple of seven. So we can adjust the rule to be remove the final digit and then subtract two times the final digit. Let's give this a try. The original number is 463. We remove the last digit to get 46, but then we have to subtract two times three. This gives us 40. You can repeat this trick as needed. We can remove the last digit, leaving us with four, and then subtract two times zero. We're left with just four, which is not divisible by seven, so neither is 463. For level five, let's see how you can create divisibility tricks for bases other than 10. As a first example, say we have the binary number 110110. From right to left, the digits are in the ones, twos, fours, eights, and sixteens places. Say we want to find a divisibility trick for three. Two is congruent to negative one modulo three, since it's one shy of three. This is just like the situation with dividing by 11 in base 10. We can use that same divisibility rule where we alternate adding and subtracting the digits. We'll get plus one minus one plus zero minus one plus one minus zero, which is zero. This is divisible by three, so the binary number 110110 is divisible by three. As another example, say we wanna check if a base seven number is divisible by six. When we divide seven by six, we get a remainder of one. So this is just like our divisibility trick for nine in base 10. For that one, we add up the digits and see if that sum is divisible. Let's try the base seven number 552. To see if this is divisible by six, we can add up those digits to get five plus five plus two, which is 12 in base 10. That is divisible by six, so the base seven number 552 is also divisible by six. Let us know in the comments what divisibility rules you come up with in base 10 or another base. I look forward to reading them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.